So Peter, thank you for joining us for this interview today. Tell us, what was the, the true inspiration behind the choir book? We know that in Britain, particularly in England, there is a wonderful tradition of church music. And it goes on and on, and we have the wonderful uh, church music school, we have the wonderful choirs in all our cathedrals and a lot of the parish churches. And I spend a lot of time, for instance, in Italy, and would that they were so lucky or so fortunate, because chorally they have a wonderful inheritance, but you actually have to hear our choral inheritance when you just drop in on any cathedral for Evensong, there's bound to be something wonderful happening. And I felt that this was really something worth celebrating. I think it's unique in the whole world. And it was Robert Ponsonby who came upon this idea and suggested it to me and I was so grateful to him. He's an old friend from the Edinburgh Festival and from the BBC Third Programme and the Proms, which he ran for years. And we discussed this. And uh, I mentioned it to the Queen's private secretary and to the Queen, and she is absolutely delighted. And I think she sees this as a very worthwhile contribution to her very special year in 2012. So. I was absolutely delighted to be a part of this. Are you happy with the way the content works out? I mean, are, are you happy with the final product? Uh, I, of course, had nothing to do with the selection of the composers. I had to abstain as the project was, in a way, my baby. And I think that's quite right. I have the input of my own work, but I think we're going to get from uh, what I have seen of the names, I haven't seen the music yet, I think we're going to get a very balanced and very inspiring uh, compilation of church music here. And of course <laughs> there are parallels, there's the book presented to Henry VIII and uh, there's the wonderful manuscript, the Eton Choir Book, compilation of composers of the early 16th century. And I think that um, this one, it will stand up. I hope it will stand up. Uh, bearing in mind the post-Christian culture, as many people describe it, are you optimistic that in, say, 60 years' time, choral music will be as popular as it has been over the last 60 years? I first used to go to hear church music uh, as a boy, just out of sheer interest, to the cathedral in Manchester. and. I felt there he was doing anthems by um, contemporary composers and I heard there, uh, for instance, Stravinsky's Ave Maria and he did things by Britain and I realised that it wasn't only that there was Palestrina and William Byrd but that contemporary composers were actively involved. And one great Philip, I think, was the coronation of Queen Elizabeth where very, very important choral music was commissioned. And I remember, I was a boy still, but hearing O Taste and See by Vaughan Williams and being very deeply moved by that. And I feel over the years that working with Tippett and Britton and before that uh, with, I think, all the composers who came through, uh, the church has still, more than any other church in any other country, done an absolutely wonderful job keeping in touch with composers. Of course, there are many composers I know who, for various reasons, wouldn't write church music, and perhaps you can't expect church choirs to do certain composers' work because it doesn't take into consideration what they usually do and what a church choir is trained to do. You can't pitch certain intervals, you can't sing certain chords if you're a regular church choir or even a cathedral choir without specialist training and without having a real insight into that kind of music like the BBC singers have, for instance. But I think that the church is still doing an excellent job and I myself feel I've had a very constructive relationship with the church. I've written pieces for 
the Anglican Church and for the Roman Catholic Church and thoroughly enjoyed doing it. I see the Roman Catholic Mass as one of the most wonderful poems in the whole world. In what people talk about being a post-Christian culture, are you optimistic that, that Christian music will survive and flourish? I hope that this choral tradition will be perpetuated and I feel more and more that quite a lot of people that I know although they might not be Catholics, they might not be Anglicans, they love to drop into a beautiful church just to contemplate, just to get into touch with a part of themselves which is self-transcendent. And a lot of people I know, they will balk at calling themselves miserable sinners or perhaps saying the Lord's Prayer, but there is something very special in the very fabric of those places. And I feel that if you are prepared to take the language of those great texts for what those texts are and take them as something which is putting into words and music something which cannot be put into any other form of expression and which is really significant for our spiritual understanding, it doesn't matter whether you're an Anglican or whatever, that this is a very constructive experience in one's life. And I feel that increasingly the Anglican Church particularly is recognizing that people have that spiritual need and that to have to confess, to believe in, as the Romans now have to do, the bodily assumption of the Virgin Mary, these things become relatively unimportant. I think that the Church is beginning to recognize that it is not what you believe but what you are and what you do on a human and a spiritual level which counts. Tell us about your own piece, your own composition for the choir book. I chose to do the Advent calendar, a wonderful poem by Raoul Williams himself. Not because he's Archbishop but because I think he's a wonderful poet and I love the way in this poem that the birth of Christ is worked very, very carefully into natural events. And so you can feel natural events foretelling this miraculous event. And the climax of it at the end of the work, where you are really looking forward to the birth, I hope that I've done it justice in my music, but it is a really wonderful poem. The thing about the poem that I really fell in love with was the poet's awareness of natural things, the awareness of nature, and the way that this is transmuted almost alchemically into his own personal Christian conviction. And I found this very moving, and uh, I just had to do something about it in my work. Tell us about the Jubilee year overall. Are you really looking forward to the events of the next 12 months? This, this Jubilee year, obviously I have quite a lot to do. I've got various pieces to write. I'm writing a symphony which I'm dedicated to Her Majesty My Number no. 9, which doesn't have chorus. Um, but I'm doing this as a mark of respect to Her Majesty. I think that uh, for her, it's a very important year but she's making it as minimum as she can because she consistently has been saying, oh, I don't want any particular fuss and these days of all these economic difficulties, I don't want to be seen to be extravagant or making too much of it all. And I think in a way she's being a little bit too modest about it because obviously she's been here for most of my life and we hope that she's going to be there for many, many more years. But it is an occasion for real celebration.